The situation was becoming dire, but I hadn't lost hope. Let me introduce you to Matthew Argulo. I repeated the same strategy as Faye, picking up removable traits like out of shape, feeble, and overweight. I also chose thick skin, hoping to avoid any run-ending mistake. This time would be different. This time, I would conquer the insanely infested streets of Louisville. Spawning in, I searched the building for any sheets to put on the windows or a weapon to protect myself. But nothing. All I found was a hiking bag, and while incredibly useful, it would do nothing if a group detected me. With no other choice, I made my way to a nearby house and checked the front door. I would need to kill to get in. Once inside, I immediately filled my pack with anything of value, coming away with food, curtains, a weapon, a leather jacket for protection, and a sick hat. Laden, I experienced my poor fitness firsthand and already knew staying on top of my exhaustion would be a tedious but necessary endeavour. After returning home and unloading my loot, I found my location and investigated the nearby area. There wasn't anything stand out close by, but the fenced houses across the street afforded more protection than the standalone one I found myself in. I'll admit, it wasn't great, but it would serve. Now tired, I turned in for the day. I awoke after only a few hours of sleep due to my wakeful and night owl traits. Seizing the time afforded to me, I immediately started clearing any nearby zombies. Without a weapon, it was imperative I only drew in a couple at most. I got lucky and found a kitchen knife on one of the corpses, which I promptly used. Following the banging noise, I went upstairs and found the source. The subsequent fight alerted those nearby. And the threat of being overwhelmed and exhausted forced me to retreat. Rested. I skirted around the building and cleared the surrounding area before heading inside. I found bourbon, curtains, a radio, and a weapon, making me far more capable in a fight. When breaking into another home, I narrowly escaped an injury, but I quickly cleared it in the backyard of its inhabitants. I left with another full backpack. But the most valuable item was a saw. If I could find a hammer, I could finally engage with the carpentry mechanics. The next house had its gate broken down, but its intact windows made it a better choice for a base than its neighbour. Continuing my momentum, I made my way one house further and scored some more bourbon before turning back. The remainder of my day was spent locking down my home, transferring items from across the street, and heading to bed. I welcomed the next day by exercising choosing burpees as they improve both fitness and strength. With the meager gains, this would be a long process. After clearing off the blood and dirt of the previous day, I returned to my old base, gathered what was left and crossed the street. I got caught out. Using my remaining energy, I looped them around the house and made my way back inside. Thankfully, I was only followed by one. But the threat of an unknown number breaking through a window caused me to leave. After catching my breath, I finally deposited everything and set to work on the group I had lost. One zombie gave me a bulletproof vest, but the rest showed me how fruitless fighting was. Ignoring the nearby horde, I continued ransacking my neighbor's properties. Fearing the water cutting off, I filled all my vessels before heading back out to burn the last of my energy. With it too early to sleep, I spent the rest of the day reading the carpentry skill book. As I read, some zombies nearby were bashing down a door. Each bang hammered in the idea that if I stayed here, it wouldn't be a single day I left my base and felt safe. I needed a better place to call home. Somewhere my efforts would permanently translate into my survival. It took a while, with many good-looking candidates, 
but none came close to what I found. A place with unbreachable walls, one entrance, 24 multi-story houses, and a large courtyard. I knew this was the place. Here, I would either thrive or die. Preparing for the journey the next day, I crafted a couple molotovs, gathered my rare finds, and packed enough food and water to last the trek. Now extremely tired, I rested, eagerly anticipating the next day. My plan was simple. If I managed to make it there, I would burn the Zeds to the ground and create a permanent den in the local population. Then, sneak into the compound and secure a house. Along my walk, I spotted a fire department ute and raced ahead. Inside I found one of my favourite weapons. Besides that, the monotony of abandoned homes, hordes, and vain attempts to survive set in. As soon as I arrived, I tried to draw in as many as possible and pull them further down the road. Throwing my molotov, I hadn't thought about the rain as the flames struggled to take hold. But it did. And so did the townhouses. After looping the buildings, I dispatched what remained and returned to the entranceway. My next step was to sneak into a house and use it as a stepping stone to secure the compound. It didn't work out. With my plan out the window, I would instead gather what I could from inside and use my second molly to clear them. If I succeeded, I would find myself in a relatively safe house and have most of the work around the compound done. At the entranceway, I circled the horde I had gathered with those outside, clumping them together, and walked them down the street. Waiting for them to burn to death were stretching into the night, so after igniting them all and pulling them away from the road, I gave them the slip and repeated my attempt to sneak in. The bottom floor was clear of the dead, but I found one in the bathroom. That was a mistake. The noise drew the attention of zombies nearby. Tension I really didn't need. Thankfully, I had to fight only three. But as I was unsure if any more had found their way in, I chose a house further down the road to settle in. This time when I opened the door to a zombie in the bathroom, I made sure to pull it outside before killing it. Just like my old home, rhythmic banging permeated every moment, continuing as I added sheets to the windows, managed my needs, and went to sleep. I awoke to a bang. Tonight would be a restless night. Afraid of fighting in the dark, I read the mechanic's skill book till it was light outside. Fuck. That was power and water cutting out. Unloading what I brought to the compound, I grabbed my axe and set to work. I stomped to preserve my axe's durability, but in groups where time was critical, I brought it down instead. The first thing on my agenda was to close off the entranceway. Without any cars or place furniture across its width. Zombies could bust it down and make their way inside, but it would deter them, give me more time to react. Looking for more furniture, I took it as an opportunity to clear and loot some more homes, though I usually tried to steal it from under their tenants' noses. After considerable effort and many risks, My magnum opus was complete. The remainder of my day, I began tackling metalworking before turning in. I awoke to many near my defenses and quickly set off to deal with them. God, I love the axe. After rebuilding my wall and exercising, it was time to clear the compound. I planned to sweep the outer road, tackle the courtyard, and then create noise to lure them out of the buildings. Chipping away at a group on the corner, I fell victim to the isometric perspective. It was time to run. Unwilling to bring them down the road, I took a risk and cut through the unseen courtyard to lose them.
With no noise from the door or guests through the window, I left to tackle the now split group. The back, I stole a look into the courtyard and continued to push west along the northern face of the compound, making sure to take frequent breaks. Eventually, my axe's condition reached critical levels, so I swapped it for the pipe wrench. It was far less effective, but it got the job done. Overheating from the hard labour, I cut down on all clothing that didn't offer protection and kept pushing. The road was clear, the day was almost over, and I was blood soaked. I finished off metalworking from the previous night and welcomed the next day. With the northern face mostly cleared, it wouldn't be long until I had secured the compound. Nope, 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 unequivocally nope. If it spotted me, I was dead. Even if it didn't, it could still pull dozens of zombies into my defenses and home and undo everything. Sitting down to watch the entranceway, I had gone unspotted, but it still brought them into a collision course with my wall. The silence that fell over Louisville ushered my way down the stairs. One had broken in, but fighting inside was unwise, so I moved the battle outside. After rebuilding my defenses from disparate furniture, I tackled the adjoining houses to end the bang. Came away with silence and something far greater. Right before falling asleep, I noticed a difference in my weight. Like the bloodbath outside, I was making incremental progress. After washing off the blood from the previous day, I restored my wall, exercised, and left to move in the opposite direction around the compound. I checked a van along the way for its key, but was unlucky. There was a chance I could find it in a container nearby, but I had more than likely burned it with my earlier stunt. My killing spree continued, as I did the same for two vehicles involved in an accident, and the two cars in the northwest corner. Reaching the northern side, I'd circumnavigated the compound and achieved the first part of my plan. My arrival at the entranceway was met by the breaking down of my defenses, but I had my men. With the exterior cleared, it was time to move on to the courtyard. There were far fewer than I expected. It wasn't long until I began yelling to draw the remainder out of the houses. I was quickly overwhelmed, but as the final step of my plan, continued to fight and chip away at them. The compound almost secure, and the entrance defences intact, I could feel safe in the street outside my home for the first time. Now reading electrical, I tried to think of the countless items I still needed to secure my future. I slept soundly, knowing I had taken the first step. It was time to kill the few zombies still trying to reach the courtyard. One of them, I failed to open the window and couldn't open the door, so I cut through the neighboring house. Inside it, I found a hammer. This would change things. I could now dismantle furniture to get their resources and engage with the carpentry mechanics of the game. Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Woodcraft. You might have noticed a change in scenery, and I know this isn't financing with the Fallen, but I do have to say, um, don't put your house and studio as equity in your brother's NFT project. Yeah. Today we'll be making a survivalist necessity, a bench so you can rest those weary legs. For this, you'll need your bench, some nails, some legs, and a hammer. There's been some budget cuts. Every good thing has a name, so I think we're gonna call this nail Abel. Uh, 
I don't know if you can see that, but that's progress. I continued silencing any noise, installed some leather gloves, electronics I could dismantle, and a radio. Using the planks and nails from dismantling furniture, I began barricading the windows of my base. Each carpentry level afforded me a flat 10% increase in resource gains, but it was still a slow process as I found myself with an excess of planks and a desperate need for nails. Wanting a faster solution, I sat down and searched for any nearby sources. The Northwest was a hardware store. Here I could find nails and many other items and materials I could use, like a sledgehammer for breaking down walls, propane for repairing cars, materials to fix tools, or seeds for farming. Essentially, if I successfully looted the store, I would be set. My next option was to the Northeast, a far more bare bones solution that might have nails, but the containers were far more accessible than if they were in a building. As you can guess, I prepared for the hardware store. In preparation, I stole the emergency broadcast frequency from a car, tuned in and listened for the weather and helicopters. With seeds on the horizon, I welcomed in the next day by reading the farming skill book. I immediately crafted a Molotov, dropped my tools and set off. I was once again walking through the streets of a dead city. As I approached the city centre, the size of the groups quickly went from scary to terrifying, pushing my resolve and that of my PCs. Now at the hardware store, I did my best to pull the Zeds away and began the arduous task of burning them to the ground. Isn't it beautiful? Having used my only molly, I chained the dwindling fireball into those up the street. The flames were close to the buildings, but it was still under control as I worked away on the second horde. I was wrong. The adjacent building was alight. I tried to pull the flaming zombies out of the building to slow the fire, but it was useless. The hardware store could catch a light, so my best time to loot it was now. But if I went in there, there was no guarantee I would make it out. All I could do was lead my group in circles, as the adjacent store also caught fire. Hungry, I headed back down the road to the grocery store. It was also on fire. I managed to grab some snacks, but the building was now a write-off. With food in my belly, I returned to the hardware store. It was also on fire. Watching my aspirations burn, I could do nothing, as I needed those following me to die first. With the horde gone and the stragglers cleared, I tried to dash in and grab anything. Opting for a safer tactic, I drew out those at the entrance before sneaking in and grabbing a welding mask. I kept trying, but never seemed to get another opportunity. It wasn't long until I was overwhelmed and forced to let them and the store burn into the night. Taking vitamins, I fought off tiredness at every step. It was 2am before their groans ceased. 
I slipped into a house and hoped the day's yelling had cleared it. I couldn't see, but one was up here with me. Now in the bedroom, the moonlight confirmed it was clear, so I chanced sleeping. Making my way across the street, I went into the store. It was all gone. For all my efforts and everything I had wanted, all I had was a welding mask to show for it. I had failed miserably. Determined to find something of value, I broke into the patrol car outside and came away with a walkie-talkie and shovel. So the last day of tense and exhausting work and the destruction of two valuable stores was worth it. The fog set the tone for the day as I returned home in a blank haze. Even the walkie-talkie couldn't tune into the one frequency I cared about. Instead of turning right toward home, I went straight. My aim was a construction site. I would at least find nails. On the bottom floor, I scored some tools. Barely any nails. And two garbage bags for a water collector. I'm happy with my haul. I ran up the one set of stairs to the second floor with them hot on my heels. There was nothing. Empty handed, I now had to pass through the hoard I had ditched. Pulling what I could out, I went in. I was lucky to have only come away with a minor injury, but it being my foot drastically slowed me. Entering the compound through the front and unable to fight with a group following would undo all my progress, so instead I would jump the fence. All I needed was a house with the front door open. I was safe, and after reblocking the entrance, I'd escaped with my life, but failed in every other way. I donned the faceplate of shame and questioned what the rest of my life would look like.